<laughs> Hello, YouTubers. Today is 225-2014. Here's a story. In South Carolina, Clinton forces try to tap Obama magic. This was published 224-2014. Okay, let's get on with the story. Columbia, South Carolina, CNN. I don't know whether we believe this, but anyway, here it goes. To hear some tell it, the 2008 South Carolina primary clash between Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton was a few steps away from a full-blown race riot. I don't recall that, do y'all? It was unbelievable down here in 2007 and 2008, said Bridget. Trip, a Democratic organizer from Lexington who supported Obama in that year's primary. Bill Clinton was going through downtown Columbia calling Barack Obama a racist. It never got that bad, of course, but in the, in the oh gosh, I can't see, in the run-up to the contest, and it's a contest, are you kidding me? And its aftermath, the Clinton campaign scrambled to explain away comments that ranked the black community rankled. Rankled? What the hell is that? R-A-N-K-L-E-D. It's a new word for me, folks. The black community. Uh, Hillary Clinton seeming to downplay Martin Luther King Jr.'s role in passing the Civil Rights Act, Bill Clinton's biting, Bill, biting, where, where the hell are they getting these words for descriptions? Biting characterization of Obama's rampa uh, campaign as the biggest fairy tale I've ever seen <coughs> and a range of remarks from Clinton allies that seemed to belittle Obama's achievement. <sighs> Sorry, y'all. I think I'm getting sicker. Bill Clinton's remarks in particular went over so poorly that South Carolina Representative James Clyburn, then the state's highest-ranking African-American in Congress, went on national television and told the former president to chill. The morning after Obama's crushing 28-point victory, Bill Clinton waved it off in glib terms, comparing Obama to Jesse Jackson, just another black candidate with black support. The loss was a stinging defeat for the Clintons, a Southern power couple who viewed their long-standing friendships in the African-American community as crucial Bulk work. I never heard of that one either. Uh, bulwark. Nope. Bulwark. Against any Democratic foe. McCain. If elections, if election were today, Hillary Clinton would be president. Yeah. But African American voters were suddenly flocking to Obama in the wake of the Iowa caucus victory, a win that made the prospect of electing the nation's first black president suddenly seem real. Black voters made up more than half of the South Carolina primary electorate, and Obama won almost 80% of them. Yeah, well, we know how that shit goes, right, people? The Democratic primary fight went on for months. But Obama banked a decisive, delicate lead, and Clinton never recovered from the loss. Clinton supporters have fresh bounce in their step. Six years ago, as Clinton considers a second presidential bid, the battle scars here have largely healed over. I love Hillary Clinton, said Clyburn. She has made a tremendous contribution to the political order in this country. Yeah, I bet she has. I have three daughters and two of my three grandchildren are girls, so I am very 
partial to women who run for office. Well, touch you. Clinton supporters in South Carolina who were slump-shouldered in the wake of her loss now have a fresh bounce in their steps. I have, they, they must have good tennis shoes on, huh? I have to be a little careful, but at this point, if she announces it's going to be her nomination, said Don Fowler, a former chairman of the Democratic National Committee during the Clinton White House years, leading African-American legislators who backed Obama are all but endorsing Clinton, even though she has not even said whether she plans to run. Oh, bullshit. We know she plans to run, and she will get office because now that we've had a black president, now they want a woman in. So, y'all, you know, this is all bullshit. It's just building up and letting the people know that, yeah, we're going to have a woman president. And several of Obama's well-regarded field marshals from 2008 have been tolling in the state since last fall on behalf of Ready for Hillary an independent group that is trying to build steam for a potential Clinton bid. Hillary Clinton surfaces as issues in GOP Senate race. Without a doubt, there are definitely a warning, a warming to her, said Anton Gunn, a hulking former college football lineman who was Obama's political director in 2008 and later served in his administration. Damn, we got football people up there in the White House, y'all. When she made the decision to be Secretary of State and did an admirable job being completely loyal to the goals and objectives that the president laid out, she made a lot of supporters. She made a lot of supporters? How about she had a lot of supporters or got a lot of supporters? She was a soldier and a part of the team just like we were. Hmm. Like all of the early caucus primary states that will help determine the Democratic nominee in 2016, South Carolina is no, is no sure bet for Clinton if she decides to run. Polls show she show her with a wide lead over her hypothetical opponents, but surveys also suggest the base of her party is drifting leftward away from the the centrism that defines Clintonian politics. Oh, my God. I guess they thought they were so bright coming up. That stupid name. A fresh set of issues or another dynamic candidate might emerge before the primary votes of early 2016. But every Democrat crat, uh, here agrees South Carolina is once again Clinton's to lose. Other than Vice President Joe Biden, the scarcity of heavyweight opponents on the horizon is striking, especially compared to 2006 when a passel of big-name Democrats were making regular trips here to campaign for midterm candidates and consult with potential supporters. Friends, papers give insight into Clinton's early years. Hmm. Emergence of another African-American candidate could hurt Clinton. She just not dominates the whole Democratic Party presidential process, Fowler said. What might damage Clinton, a range of South Carolina Democrats said, would be the sudden emergence of another African-American candidate in a primary where the per percentage of black voters could be as high as 60%. <clears throat> well, let's get off it here. First off, he, he's black, but he's not an African American. Let's straighten that out right now. Okay? Unless there is another Barack Obama out there, I don't see the same thing happening again said Daryl Jackson, a pastor and longtime state senator who was one of the Clinton's leading surrogates in the state in 2008. I thought surrogates was people who carried babies for other people. Hmm. 
for a trip now working ready for Hillary the prospect of making history by helping elect the country's first woman president has a unique appeal. There will never be another first black president, she said. Former South Carolina Governor Jim Hodge. <coughs> 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 Jim Hodges, <coughs> a chairman of Obama's campaign in 2008, pointed to a clear hunger among Democrats here for a woman to be the nominee. She is well positioned, Hodges said of Clinton. There is no obvious alternative in the Democratic Party. I just don't see anyone emerging right now who would cause her problems if she runs. Inside Politics, Hillary's Interpretation of the Roosevelt Rule. Hodges mused that a challenger on her progressive flank could give Clinton a headache, even in South Carolina. The Democratic ranks have become more liberal over the years, he said, with Southern conservatives leaving the party and a continuing influx of out-of-staters, known locally as come-heres, who aren't beholden to Southern ortho orthodoxy. Hmm. If the political terrain here has shifted since 2008, it should not come as a surprise to Clinton. Both Jackson and Hodges said they've had recent conversations with Bill Clinton, though neither would divulge the content of their discussions. The former president and I stay in contact, and all, is all Jackson would say. Ready for Hillary rally fundraiser felt like Obama campaign reunion. The budding alliance between Obama and Clinton forces here. All least the one Clinton supporters wanted to project, project was on display last week inside a converted toll, uh, a concert, converted loft space in Columbia, a few blocks from the Congaree River. After similar efforts in Iowa and New Hampshire, ready for Hillary Clinton was hosting its debut debut fundraiser in South Carolina, collecting small donations, price of entry, $20, what? Price of entry, $20.16, and email addresses from the 80 or so Democrats who showed up on a balmy Thursday evening. What the hell's with the 16 cents? Hmm. A bold blue, the I'm ready for Hillary, banner adorned the wall, and organizers handed out pro-Hillary buttons. But the session had the distinct feel of an Obama campaign reunion. State legislators, uh, field operatives, and stirring committee members from Obama's campaign showed up and said nice things about Clinton. Free food and free media attention seemed to be part of the attraction. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, but what the hell are they doing all this campaign bullshit now if uh, she's not even announced that she's running? I mean, come on. Senate candidate Rick Wade, a senior Obama advisor in the state, worked the room in a crisp blue suit, greeting friends like State Rep. Bar Bakari Sellers, a young Obama backer in 2008, and today a lieutenant governor candidate who was booked as the fundraiser's head speaker, headline speaker. Hillary Clinton on criticism, don't get dragged, dragged down. It's hard to say you would endorse somebody who isn't running yet. Sellers said when asked whether he would back Clinton in 2016, I support the former first lady. It's early, but I do support these efforts. Across the way, former Obama 
aide, Jonathan Medcalf, one of the Ready for Hillary's lead organizers, shared an embrace with Kay Coons, a state Democratic Party official and vocal Clinton backer. They were surround, surrounded by Democrats of all races, ribbling nibbling on chicken tenders and cheese cheese balls chicken tenders i wonder if it's uh <laughs> mcdonald's chicken nuggets <laughs> <laughs> all that is is chopped up fat and um you know what they was feeding the kids at the school and that jamie whatever his name the the chef and <laughs> he ended up discovering what it was really made of. Bone crunched up and fat, the chicken fat and chicken skin. And they take it and they chop it all up. They put in a bunch of freaking tasted, tasty flour stuff and seasonings. And then they roll it out and they punch it out. And I mean, it's not meat, not at all. And people are buying this shit and feeding it to their kids. But anyway, let's get back to the story. We were at war, uh, Medcalf said. Uh, but here we are together. That's pretty powerful. Obama strategists used the Palmetto State in 2008 as an incubator for their now legendary voter registration and turnout machinery and operation masterminded by Jeremy Byrd, then the campaign's young South Carolina field director. <clears throat> uh, after twice helping elect Obama to the White House, Byrd is now a senior advisor to Ready for Clinton. <laughs> oh my God. They just move around, you know, like uh, chess pieces, you know what I mean? <clears throat> they move from one position to another. One of Byrd's former deputies, Greenville native Quentin James, is also on the ready for Hillary Payroll as the group's black American director. He put together the pro-Clinton fundraiser. Thorny issues confront ready for Clinton. Medcalf boasted... That ready, damn, this is a long story, y'all. And my poor voice ain't holding up too well. Metcalf boost, boasted that Ready for Hillary staffers are applying Obama's vaunted outreach tactic, tactics to generate grassroots enthusiasm for Clinton. He says, we have been organizing since October, Metcalf said. Top advocates, activists in the state are already sewn up. That's the story. This isn't even a fraction of the army we've already built. It's been a lot of persuasion, a lot of travel, trying to connect with people on what's important to them and relating that back to supporting Hillary Clinton. I've only got one person who worked for Barack that would not help me with Hillary. The gushing enthusiasm mar masked some of the thornier issues that have confronted Ready for Hillary on its quest to lay groundwork for a Clinton presidential bid and co-opt some of, Ob of the Obama magic. Hillary Clinton is a kindergarten teacher, question mark. Though the group has the de facto support <clears throat> of Clinton world as it tries to build the framework for a national campaign, it is barred under federal election law from coordinating from former Secretary of State because she is not a declared candidate for federal office. We don't have a candidate and we don't have a campaign, so we can't answer all your questions, Metcalf informed the audience, but we would like Secretary Clinton to know in uncertain terms that she has grassroots support in South Carolina. Boy, they make everything sound good, don't they, when they say grassroots, like it's really the people that want it. Putting the cart before the horse. 
the task of challenging Clinton, uh, Obama's camp. Shit, let me start over. The task of cha channeling Obama's unique grassroots. Oh, here we go again. Excitement into support for Clinton, a completely different politician who does not stir Democratic passions in the same way Obama does as a complicated enterprise. At the conclusion of Ready for Hillary's Columbia fundraiser, a chant of fired up, ready to go. The famous Obama incantation from 2008 petered out after just two rounds. In an interview, Clyburn, Clyburn was critical of Ready for Clinton, or I mean Ready for Hillary, saying that any effort to gin up excitement for 2016 before the 2014 midterm elections is putting the cat cart before the horse. He said uh, Democratic energies in South Carolina should be focused squarely on helping other gubernator shit, gubernatorial candidate. That's a tongue twister. Vincent um, Sheehan unseal Governor Nikki Halley in November. The overemphasis and the time and energy spent on presidential politics at this junction juncture are misplaced, Claiborne said. You don't deal with the structure from the top down in politics. In building any structure, you have to build from the bottom up. I just wish that all of these people who spend all their time on presidential politics in 2016 would spend half that time on the governor's race in 2014 and putting structure in place. I just think this is misplaced priorities. Well, shit. Misplaced priorities? Are you freaking kidding me? Hell, they don't work for us. They work for themselves. They pad their pockets. They do whatever the fuck. But it isn't for us. So, you know, what? Uh, work for your constituents, people. You work for us, but you're not listening to our voices because you don't give a shit. Confidant's diary. Clinton wanted to keep records for revenge. Oh, well, shit. Yeah, let's do the schoolyard bullshit. Other Democrats were even more disparaging. They're all disparaging. Is Hillary ready for Hillary? That's the question. Oh, that's stupid, said former South Carolina Democratic Party Chairman Dick Harputian. <laughs> that's for real. Harputian. What a damn name. <laughs> Who said plans to support Biden if he runs? Isn't a pol <laughs> I can't get over that name. <laughs> Is it a political organization or a fan club for a boy band? <clears throat> I just don't understand the idea that somehow you've got to encourage her to run. Either people want to run and have a coherent message about why they should be president or not. She has been around the block. No shit. Rode hard <laughs> and put up wet. <clears throat> she knows that if she wants to run, she can get in and get the money. <clears throat> oh, hell, she's got the money. Hell, just print some more up up there in Washington. Shit, she can dig in there and get <laughs> And get her something. <laughs> Anyhow, I think it's a a a cult. You damn right it is a cult. <clears throat> oh dang on things a cult. I think it's a cult, not a political movement. Harputian added <laughs> Ready for Hillary compared to who? The field still has to develop. Ready for Hillary supporters were at pains to say pleasant things about Clinton's potential opponent, opponents. 
uh, and to note that they were planning to use their organizational muscle to assist midterm candidates. We want to use energy and excitement here to remind people, especially young people. Yeah, those fluoride sucked up, screwed up, uh, can't concentrate kids there, that we have some important campaigns in 2014, said Kuntz. This is great training. We want to work hard for Democrats in 2014 and use that for Hillary in 2016. Okay, damn, is this story ever going to end? Biden's name. <laughs> also mentioned in 2016 discussions. Despite her overwhelming advantages, Clinton's name is hardly the only one that surfaces in early discussions about the 2016 primary. Biden is the most common one. I'm more of a ready for Biden guy kind of guy, said Tyler Jones, a Democratic operative in Charleston. When asked whether he was attending the pro Clinton fundraiser last week, unlike Obama, who has not set foot in the state since the night of his primary victory <clears throat> here six years ago, the vice president has returned to South Carolina over and over again for official White House business, political spade work and personal time. Biden, who would be making his third presidential bid if he runs in 2016, impressed party activists here last year as the headline speaker of the Democratic Party Jefferson Jackson dinner. He later attended a fish fry hosted by Clyburn. Wonder if that's any of that tainted ocean fish <laughs> and shrimp and all that crap. Why Hillary forgave Bill about Monica. Oh, shit. Let's bring it all up, folks. Supporters of Biden are not shy about pointing out his deep ties to the state. His yearly vacations on Kiwa Island, his impressive 2003 eulogy for the late Senator Strom Thurmond, and his friendships with brand-name Democrats Brand name, oh damn, they got brand names now. Democrats, including former Senator Fritz Hollings and Charleston Mayor Joe Riley. Biden has also kept in close touch with a handful of key state legislators, welcoming them with open arms during trips to Washington. Yeah, our taxes at work again, y'all. Biden's had... Biden's had a long history in the state of South Carolina, said Trip King, a longtime Biden confidant who lives in Columbia. He is fond of the state, has spent a lot of time down here over the years, and has developed a lot of lifelong friendships. Uh, if Biden were to run, he would be extremely well received in South Carolina. Another Democrat who has tried to make inroads here in Maryland, uh, Governor Martin O'Malley, who addressed a Democratic policy conference last spring in Charleston, where his daughter attends college. During his visit, O'Malley convened getting to know you, getting to know you, getting to know all about you, getting to know you meetings with party power brokers and activists, some of whom received O'Malley's family Christmas cards in December. I, I thought those were forbidden up there at the White House and stuff. Well, oh well, you know, couldn't send no damn Christmas cards. Contests and primary wouldn't be a bad thing for the party. I'd be surprised if he doesn't run and doesn't announce earlier than others, Hodges said of O'Malley. He is clearly interested, and he needs to test his messages and appeal beyond Maryland. In interviews, Democratic activists and elected officials in the state also expressed curiosity about New York Senator Kirsten uh, Gillibrand, Virginia Senator Tim Kane and Minnesota Senator Amy Clockbutcher. 
two, <laughs> two organizers at the Ready for Hillary event said they wanted to learn more about New York Governor Mario Curry Kumo mixed mixing up Andrew's name for that of his famous father. Even as they try to project an air of invincibility and lure Clinton into the race, lure her, oh come on, some of her supporters admit that a con contested primary would be a good thing for the party and, far, and for the candidate. If she walks into the nomination without being challenged without having the opportunity to exercise her campaign techniques and expertise. It might be tough in a general election, Fowler said. Every major league team goes through spring training. A little spring training wouldn't be bad. Oh, shit, y'all. I see the light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, coming on the end of the track here. Harpoon Tillian was um, characteristically more blunt. It's insanity to think that a primary is a bad thing, he said. It would make her better. If she can't get through a primary, how will she get through a general election when the Koch brothers are spending $8 billion? Wow. Okay, finally we're done. Oh, okay, Carol Roberts.